From WXII 12 News, this is Breaking News. Breaking news, Winston-Salem police just released some of the 911 calls made in the aftermath of the fatal shooting at a BJ's Brewhouse restaurant at Haynes Mall last week. Yeah, police say Robert Granado shot Julius Sampson Jr. during an argument last week. Have a listen now to part of one of the 911 calls. We just heard about a fire and it seemed like there's a commotion. Um, is, it a, um, is it ever about BJ's restaurant? Is that BJ's? I don't know. Um, Says Blue House, BJ's, yes. Okay, did you see him shooting or anything like that, ma'am? Or did you see any uh, people from the area? I, so. I didn't. We just came out of Delta and I saw, we heard a pop, and then there was some a body went down. What you've just listened to, one of two calls released today. Other calls include the initial call to 911. They are not being released. They are sealed by a court order, which states that the calls could jeopardize the suspect's right to a fair trial. Granado is charged with first degree murder and carrying a concealed handgun after consuming alcohol. Now, late last week, the police chief announced that at this time, there was no evidence to suggest that the shooting was racially motivated. Today, the mayor of Winston-Salem, Alan Join, spoke about that shooting publicly for the very first time. He said the investigation will be transparent and is asking the public to trust the process. Representative Derwin Montgomery says that the black community has a right to have questions and be concerned. He also says everyone should let police do their jobs, but stay on top of things. Continue to ask the questions, continue to keep the pressure on our, our departments here, the police department, as well as our district attorney's office, because with that pressure, it leaves the checks and balances that are necessary. A former Winston-Salem police officer has also written a letter to the city council asking for 911 calls and body camera footage from that shooting to be released. Mayor Joins did not address those requests. The family of the victim in the shooting, Mr. Sampson, will hold a funeral service for him tomorrow. It's happening at 1 o'clock at Union Baptist Church in Winston-Salem. Visitation begins at noon. The family is asking people to wear white to that service. Happening now, the man accused of stealing a car with the baby in the back seat is now in custody. High Point deputies tell us that Michael Enox was just has just returned himself in into the sheriff's office and deputies say that he took a car from a parking lot with a baby in the back seat. As I mentioned earlier, police say that the one year old's mother left the car unlocked and running while she went into a store and her baby was asleep in the back seat. Police later found the car in Davidson County with just the baby inside. The baby was returned to the family unharmed. Enoch's manager says that she got a call from the suspect this morning saying that he was stuck without a ride and would be into work as soon as he could. The manager now tells us that Enoch will not be allowed to work there anymore. Well, tonight, Governor Cooper has issued an executive directive aimed at strengthening North Carolina's gun safety laws. That's right. The governor is now also calling for an end to hate speech. Bill O'Neill was there as he made these announcements while speaking at a summit on school safety in Greensboro. Citing the lack of action by the Republican-led legislature on gun safety, the governor moved today to strengthen background checks. His directive closes the information gap increasing the amount of information shared with the federal database used for background checks. The governor says nearly 300,000 criminal convictions that went unreported have now been added. It also calls for threat assessment training for local law enforcement to help identify potential risk in the community and to share more information with local businesses and community groups regarding domestic terror indicators. We all play a critical role making sure During his speech, the governor also cited the recent shootings in Texas and Ohio, urging those attending today's school safety summit to take action against hate speech. The governor says the rise in hate speech is a wake-up call. It is unacceptable for elected leaders at any level to incite hate and use fear to divide people for political purposes. Hatred, bigotry, Racism and prejudice have no place in our conversations, in our speeches, or in our Twitter feeds. You, you didn't mention the president today, but you talked about hate speech, and I'm wondering were you were referring to the president. Uh, I was referring to all leaders, including the president and others who have made comments either in their speeches or through their Twitter feeds 
that tend to incite hatred and to encourage divisiveness for political purposes. The governor called on elected leaders to condemn hate speech, saying it only incites more violence. In Greensboro, I'm Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News. Also today, the governor announced a new partnership between schools and the justice system. The goal here is to find alternative ways to deal with student misconduct to keep more students in the classroom and out of courts and out of jail. The partnership will also minimize school suspensions, expulsions and court referrals for what's known as minor misconduct. So instead of a student being arrested for something like fighting or bringing alcohol to school, school leaders could find a different solution. I also believe that we are capable of doing better when we know better. Brian Stevenson says every one of us is in need of more mercy, more redemption, and more justice. For now, school resource officers will continue to have the final call on whether a student is arrested or ends up in one of these diversion programs. Today, the Trump administration issued new rules for people seeking green cards. Yeah, now immigrants who use things like food stamps, Medicaid, and housing vouchers, as well as other forms of public assistance, will be denied a green card. The new changes impact people who enter the country legally and are trying to get permanent residence. Education and household income will also become relevant factors when someone is looking to become a legal U.S. citizen. We certainly expect people of any income to be able to stand on their own two feet. And so uh, if people are not able to be self-sufficient, then, then this negative factor is going to bear very heavily against them. This administration uh, wants to inflict as much pain as they can on some of the most vulnerable people uh, in this country. These changes are set to take effect middle of October. The State Board of Elections could name its new chairperson tomorrow. The board is set to choose a new chairperson from its members. Robert Cordell was the chairman but resigned after making an inappropriate joke about women at a meeting of state election officials. Governor Roy Cooper appointed Democrat Damon Sir Costa to replace Cordell and the board now has three Democrats and two Republicans. Well, thousands of old state court documents could soon be more accessible to you. The State Archives of North Carolina is getting $143,000 for a project to expand its online catalog of documents. The money is coming from a federal grant. The improved catalog could help historians and locals know the history of their state. The documents will be available on the State Archives website and samples of the documents will be posted online throughout the project. Looking ahead, the name of the Dixie Classic Fair in Winston-Salem might not change now until 2021 rather than 2020 next year. According to an action request form that's set to be considered tomorrow afternoon, the city would like to hire a marketing consultant to develop a new name for the fair. That consultant would then provide three potential names by next March. The mayor and city council would pick a new name by next May, then reveal the name and the logo next October, with the complete rebranding taking effect the following year, 2021. Staff estimates this will cost between fifty and sixty thousand dollars to develop a new name. This process started back in April of this year when a group of citizens said they felt the current name was segregating, separating, and divisive. There was a public input process where about eleven thousand five hundred people weighed in. The vast majority wanted the name to stay the same. This year's fair, under its current name, runs from October fourth through the thirteenth. It's hot and humid, not letting up soon, and that, of course, could translate into some storms later on this week. Yeah, worried about some triple-digit heat indices as well. Let's get things right over to meteorologist Michelle Kennedy. Michelle, how's the rest of the work week shaping up? You know, we do have a few isolated showers possible later this evening and even overnight, a few passing showers before the storms really get going late tomorrow around dinner time through midnight. We have a risk of severe storms along with the high heat of feeling like the lower 100s tomorrow. Then a few more storms possible Wednesday. It does look like we're going to feel like the upper 90s to near 100 for a couple of days here as a ridge aloft continues to keep us warm. Also at the surface, we've been dealing with a little sunshine to start our days. Now more moisture rolling in and that is going to increase our feels like conditions tomorrow up into the 100s. Unfortunately, in upper 90s if you're in the mountains, we've had a few passing showers right now. That one moving out of southern Davidson down into Troy area. If you're lucky, you'll get a sprinkle from that one. These are fading pretty quickly, but the heavy rain that has been falling bringing anywhere from a half an inch to about an inch out over Wil uh, Wilkes County and northern Wilkesboro too. a few scattered showers out and about. You're looking at some showers up to the north in Virginia, and really this line is the focus of our action for 
tomorrow, so we'll be watching for that. 85 though in Greensboro after a few showers rolled through earlier, kept your temperatures down too. 88 degrees in Burlington. We'll be talking about our severe thunderstorm risks and hoping to get a little bit more rainfall out here. We'll let you know how much and those severe storms break it down for you coming up. Thank you so much, Michelle. Some really good news for a family in Louisville. Their missing six year old boy is back home safe and sound tonight. That kind of stuff we love to report on. Our cameras were there when Landon Lindsay was reunited with his mother. An incredible moment as mom sees and then runs to her little boy, picks him up and gives him a hug that who knows may still be going on right now. A little guy was reported missing from Big Tree Drive in Louisville at about 2.30 this afternoon. The sheriff's office says he was found a couple of houses down. They think right now he wandered into the unlocked basement of a home and no one was in that home at the time. That's why it took so long to find him. But the family is back together tonight. Oh, great happy mm -hmm. reunion there for sure. Burlington police are now looking for the person who shot at an apartment complex and then Allegedly at police, police say shots were fired at the Brittany Apartments located on Huffman Mill Road this morning. And when they got there, they heard another shot fired from the woods nearby. Police say the shot seemed to be aimed at them. They say no one was hurt, but bullets hit at least one apartment. And this week, you can join the conversation to put an end to hunger here in the Piedmont Triad. I'll be moderating a town hall discussion tomorrow. It's part of our Project Community Initiative. It will happen at Wilkes Community College in Wilkesboro at 6.30 p.m. Local experts will discuss ways to fight rural hunger. You do need to register to attend this event, and we have a link on how to do that on our website, WXII12.com.